yeah so who joined later we were discussing about uh, today's agenda like today we are going to learn about some functions and uh, uh, specifically how to draw graph and what can we infer from the graph etc and after that i'll move on to limits and some tips on limits how to do that and after that i'll move to differentiability there are also some important concepts which i need to tell you but i am not sure that today if i can cover rules lagrange's or mean value theorem or intermediate value properties etc so probably i'll cover it tomorrow i'll I, i'll uh, upload one recorded lecture for that yeah so uh, i was asking you guys who are not at all familiar with uh, the graph drawing thing like who can't draw graph i did not get any response so i can assume that people know how to draw graphs okay so i'll just tell you the basics of it so can you guys see my screen hello yes it's visible yeah na please respond otherwise i i don't get to know that what is happening yeah yeah so uh you guys know that what is the definition of a function we can we can define a function using a mapping a mapping a from f is from function a to b said to be a function if each element in the set a has a image in set b like each element in a should have some element image obviously image in set b but there might be the case that Uh, there there are some more elements in b which are not which are not uh, the mapping of this domain a okay but then also it is a function but if you leave out some elements from a say in this case this is not a function okay and obviously this is a function this is a many to one functions in general so many elements can map to a single element can you just quickly give me an example of this function quick example a uh, mod of x fx equal to x square yeah yeah mod of x and fx equal to x square both are this types of functions okay yeah very nice and uh, and can you please give the example of this example this picture that is also a very familiar example you guys know about it give me one example of this it's uh, fx equal to fx cube fx equal to x cube fx equals to x cube x cube when x equal to minus 3 Uh, no 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 that's a function this is a no, relation is. yeah this is a relation not function this is a relation okay root x yeah root x is there and also the like uh, the expression of the circle x square plus y square equals to some x square okay draw the graph this is the graph so obviously you can get like for 1 or for 0 you can get two values so this is not a function this is a relation okay so fine uh, is it okay is it okay yeah yes. and uh, yeah can you guys define domain and codomain can you guys define domain and codomain what is domain what is the domain of a function and what is the codomain of a function and why it is called codomain you guys are familiar with range but not with codomain in what we study from 10 plus 2 
so tell me something like yeah anyone of you can answer you guys don't know the definition of domain like tell in terms of this yeah what is the domain and codomain here in this function uh, a is the domain and b is the codomain yeah 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 definitely but uh, if you just extend your definition from codomain to range then what do you need to do what you need to do because i have already defined that there are some points in b which are not image of a yeah so range is basically a subset of the codomain yeah 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 range is basically the subset of the codomain so when we will learn about bijection one one on two one one and on two functions these things will be much more clear okay why she told that uh, range is a subset of code when i have written it because some elements in the code domain might not be the image of a see here in this case yeah i have drawn some elements here in the code domain but they are not at all mapping but that does not mean that it is violating anything the any definition of the function it might happen just you can do something you can restrict your domain likely so that all these extra elements just move out and uh don't come in the set of b you can do that that thing only okay like say uh, uh i'm giving you a, an example like a to b fine so we are y equals to x square this is definitely a function fine uh, yeah this kind of a function not one to one but many to one okay so the range we are defining r uh, real number r and also the codomain we are defining r but you know the range is r, r plus like only the positive part okay so but you are defining it r here so there are some elements like all the negative r is there and and negative negative region is there which are not getting mapped from a to b so these are the this extra points so if we just restrict this codomain to r plus then then our function will be okay in this case so we can say that r plus is a proper subset of r then the range is r and the codomain is a uh, range is r plus and the codomain is entire real real numbers is it okay is it clear say yes please is it clear to you uh, guys can you just repeat yes. Yes. yeah which which part you guys wish uh, want me to repeat uh, you you were saying something about r plus uh, if you yeah yeah wait, okay 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 let me draw something wait wait uh, please wait for one minute please wait. Huh? Okay, uh, okay. Can you guys see my screen, the new screen? Yes. Hello. Yeah. This is a graph of graph of y equals to x square. You all know it. Okay. But we are defining a from a to b. like that we define and our af is x square in this case 
एंड वी आर डिफाइनिंग ए टू बी रियल नंबर एंड बी टू बी रियल नंबर सो हियर माई डोमेन इज द एंटायर रियल नंबर एंड माई को डोमेन इज is also entire real number but you can see that this part there is nothing this part of y like negative y is nothing in case of x square so it is mapping from real number to r plus but we have defined our domain to be r is it clear up to this point Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what we can do? That we can say that R square is the range, and the codomain is R. So you all know that this. Ah, uh, not sorry. R square. R plus. Sorry. Positive. R plus means positive of the real line. Okay, the positive. This is R plus, and this is R minus. We define it like that. Okay. So uh, here R plus is the range. and your codomain is the entire real line so you know that r plus is a proper subset of r is it validating from here that codomain uh, the range is a subset of codomain yeah did you guys understand my point what i am seeing just why and why this is important you will know when uh, we will discuss uh, bijection and on to function or something like that okay on to and into is it clear guys yeah it's clear yeah so moving forward okay wait yeah acha see here uh, that sengage learning book has a, has a really very good functions chapter okay you can you guys can read from there and you guys also can solve some problems from there too so here is some definitions of polynomial functions that how you can write it the generalized form of the polynomial function okay you can write it likewise there are some uh, functional questions uh, where you have to write the general form and then solve the other thing so that is why this general, generalized forms are required okay and just read out the definitions rational function explicit explicit function implicit function bounded identity uh, acha give me one example of a bounded function quick example quick example x square plus y square is less than uh, equal to 1 which one sorry x square plus y square less than equal to 1 like the equation of circle but th that is not a function that is a relation uh, i have mentioned earlier like yeah this is becoming the the circle equation of the circle is becoming this case very easy example you have in your hand very easy example bounded function is it sin x sin yeah. function sin x and cos x is bounded but tan x is not bounded okay see here sin x the uh, do, range of the sin x is plus 1 to minus 1 and also for cos x same goes but in case of tan x it becomes minus infinity to plus infinity just recall some trigonometric functions there okay okay so i'll be sharing this note notes to you if you don't wish to study that uh, study all these things from the book then also it is okay but uh, you can read it from here also i have put it here okay so fine uh, yeah now there is one short discussion on how to draw graphs of a function this is very important because i always recommend everyone to draw a graph first to visualize the function and afterwards you can just carry forward with your analysis regarding the functions okay so yeah i have just shown this shifting thing just shift uh, in the x axis and shifting in the uh, y axis okay and after that i'll be generalizing it using some 
uh, general definition of the function. So, so you know that uh, uh, mod x is even function, and so it is symmetrical to y axis. And the graph looks like this, the, this V thing, okay? And also some other important properties on mod x, like it is a continuous function through the, through every point of it, like through the real real numbers R, R, but it is not differentiable at zero. Why it is not differentiable? See, the slope is continuous at each and every point. So if you draw the slope graph, graph of the slope, it will become here the slope is positive because the theta is this and obviously the theta is less than 90 degree so the slope is tan theta as we know so that is obviously greater than zero so this is plus one and th here the theta is becoming greater than 90 degree and you know that all sine tan cos in four quadrants so all sine sine is positive so definitely tan is negative here so there is a negative slope and that is also minus one because y equals to minus x when x less than zero and y equals to plus plus x when x greater than zero. So it is becoming like that, plus one and minus one. So there is a jump discontinuity. There is a jump discontinuity. When, and, or there are some more different kinds of discontinuity like removable discontinuity is also there, but you don't need to know all these things but there is a jump discontinuity so that is why the function is not differentiable here because the left hand derivative and the right hand derivative at x equals to zero is different yeah uh, i am i am telling all these things because these are the features of y equals to mod x okay that is why i am saying all these things so it covers continuity differentiability and also the thing that how to draw a graph okay now look into this point we are shifting along x-axis like we are adding some terms with x so if we put x equals to minus one then only the y will be zero so the function will remain exactly same for everything just it will shift by minus one you don't need to plot any point of it but just um, to be sure, just uh, find the zero. Okay, find the zero of the function. For that, you just know that where to just put the zero in it. So if that is minus one, so it is symmetric about y equals to minus one. And if it is y equals to x minus one, then it will just shift here at plus one. It will be symmetric around plus one. Y equals to plus one. Is it okay? Is it okay? A yes. Condition here? Yeah. And yeah, that is the shifting around y x axis. And now I'll shift the graph around y axis. How am I doing that? Not just we are adding something with y, not with x. Don't look it in this way. Y minus y uh, one equals to mod x. Just look it in this way. So we are making y minus 1. So if we put y equals to 1, then x is 0. Think it otherwise. So, so it is shifting upwards. Like when x is 0, then y will definitely take 1 value. It will start from 1. Okay. And similarly, y plus 1 equals to mod x, then it will be just in this direction. Uh, sorry. It, it will be like this. Everything will be same, just the shifting will happen. And if we just add both, just do both, like uh, send me the graph of this y minus 3 equals to mod x plus 2. Draw this graph and send it to me in the personal chat. <laughs> 